at temple. And from the ruins of that temple, we can see that its main columns were about 60 feet, which is about 20 meters high and more than six feet in diameter. So this mother goddess was honored and worshiped with all kinds of sexual immorality and impurity. And so we see the lack of discipline and declaration. And the declaration was that, was that the, the, the city or Sardis was an immoral city, so to say. And the Greek historian Herodotus tells the story of the fall of this city in the days of Cyrus, King Cyrus. When King Cyrus came to Sardis and found the position of the city ideally suited for, for defense, and he says, there seemed to be no way to scale the steep cliff wall surrounding the city. So the city was so surrounded that no one could enter or gain access into the city. So he offered, because he wanted to know how to get or how to access the city, he offered a rich reward to any soldier in his army that could figure out a way to get up into the city. And one soldier studied this problem carefully. And he says, as he looked, he saw a soldier defending Sardis drop his helmet down the cliff wall. And this was the opportunity for him to watch how he will get or recover his helmet. So he watched as the soldier climbed down a hidden trail to recover the helmet. And he marked the location to the trail and led to a detachment of troops up to it at that night. And they easily climbed the cliffs, came to the actual city walls and found them unguarded. And the soldiers of Sardis were so confident in natural defenses of their city that they felt there was no need to keep guard or to keep a diligent watch. And so the city was easily conquered. Curiously, the same thing happened almost 200 years later when Antiochus attacked and conquered the overconfident city that they didn't even see him coming and they, they didn't even set a watch over the city. And so that's the brief background that I found on this living dead church. And let me read chapter three of uh, Revelations. To the church in Sardis and to the angels of the church in Sardis write, the words of him who has seven spirits of God and seven stars. I know your works. You have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. Remember then what you received and heard. Keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what hour I will come against you. Yet you have still a few names in Sardis, people who have not spoiled their garments and they will walk with me in white for they are worthy. The one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He who, hears, who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. And so 
the, the first question will be to, to understand the, the description of Jesus as having seven spirits and seven stars. And what does that mean? And we find that four times in this book of Revelation, the seven spirits are mentioned. First in chapter one, verse four. Secondly, in this chapter that we have read, chapter three, verse one. Thirdly, chapter four, verse five. And the fourth one is in chapter five, verse six. And each of the other three instances refers to this as the seven spirits of God. We know that biblically, when we hear the word spirit, we almost think of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will be attached to it, which means it's the Holy Spirit. But there are various interpretations, again, of what the seven spirits of God refer to. And it could refer to the Holy Spirit himself, like I said, Seven is usually used in the Bible, I think over 800 times. Many of these references are in Revelations. And the number seven we know is often used to denote completeness or perfection. So it could be a way of referring to the Holy Spirit as complete and perfect. And we know that there is only one Holy Spirit, as Paul states in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4. So if this is a reference to the Holy Spirit, it shows that Jesus and the Holy Spirit are united in, in ministry. And we see this, that each letter is concluded. Each, each letter, when, when you read all the seven letters, you see that each letter is concluded with the phrase, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. And so that, that could be another explanation. Another explanation could be a reference to Isaiah chapter 11, verse two, where we see the sevenfold ministry of Holy Spirit. Isaiah talks about the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of mind, might, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And so if we, we could say Jesus comes to this church with these spirits, these seven spirits, and we can see that one thing that led to the spirit that led in this church was the fear of the Lord. And so it may be reference again to seven spiritual beings or angels that are not described in detail here or elsewhere. But the, the first and the third option seem to me more likely, but we, can, we cannot be actually sure that it could be that. There are some aspects of revelation also we will not fully understand on the side of heaven. And so the seven stars, again, is mentioned that Jesus comes holding seven stars. These stars are defined in Revelation chapter 1, verse 20, as being the angels of the seven churches. The word for angel is messenger here. So the seven stars are the seven messengers or leaders of these churches. And it is a reminder to us that Jesus holds the leaders of the church in his hand, supporting, sustaining, and strengthening them. And Jesus' description of himself shows the specific need of the church in Sardis. The problem with the church in Sardis is that it was largely dead. Thus, it was important for them to know that Jesus would send the Holy Spirit to revive and regenerate them if they were willing. And if they would rely on Jesus, 
he would help them and strengthen them. And many churches are dead because maybe sometimes blind, blind traditions or rules that we follow instead of depending on Jesus or on the word of God. We, we see so many churches that look alive, but yet dead. Uh, you hear the, the worship is, is so powerful. And sometimes even the sermons are powerful. The whole church is packed and you, you think this is the living church. But when you look deeper, if you have that spiritual eye or that spiritual discernment, you can see that this church is dead. A church without the Holy Spirit is not a church at all. The church of Sardis needed the spiritual revival. And so Jesus' description as having the seven spirit of God and the seven stars was a clear reminder that he could bring about the revival if they would wake up and turn to him, he could give them the spiritual life that they so needed. And the solution to a dead or robotic Christianity is Christ. He sends the life-giving spirit. There is no other place to get spiritual life. Nothing else brings revival. Whether programs and music, they don't bring revival. Jesus brings revival with his Holy Spirit. If you are in need of the spiritual revival, Jesus is the place to go to get revival. And the other question might be, why was it important to the church, for the church of Sardis to hear what Jesus know, that Jesus knows their works? Because he said, I know your works. Once again, we see this phrase repeated. Jesus says the same phrase to every church. It is like a, a double-edged double sword. It means he, he, he is well aware and he also appreciates the good work, but also he knows the bad. And it shows that we can never keep any secrets from him. Uh, and so the other question might be, what criticism does Jesus give his church? He says, you have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. And for most churches, Jesus started off with a con con commendation and then moved to criticism. But here Jesus starts off with the problem of the church. And it is a big one. They are spiritually dead. And to be dead clearly means to be without Christ. So the church's problem is that they are not a church at all. Most people in the church were not real believers. But in verse 4, we hear Jesus saying that there are a few who were believers, who were real believers, but most were just going through the emotions or going through motions. And, and that is a serious problem that we, 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 we face in, in, even in, this, in the modern church, in the world that we live in right now. We see that they had a reputation of being alive. In other words, they thought they were saved and others looked at, at them and thought they were saved. You know, when you're looking at someone and thinking that they are holy and they are, they are living a holy life while behind the closed doors, they are something else. Because outside they looked good. They, they did the things that Christians do. They said the things that Christians said. But Jesus knew the truth. And the truth is they were spiritually dead. Although they were in a church, they were spiritually dead. They were active. They were doing everything, but they were, they were not there. Just imagine, you know, most people saying that I am a believer and I'm saved. And then 
one day you get to heaven and Jesus says, depart from me, I never knew you. It's exactly what is happening to some of us Christians that we think we are in while we are in, the, the grace of God has departed from us. God has left us there. So this, this was the problem with the church in Sardis. And some things do not prove or disprove salvation to, in our lives. Being a Christian, going to church every day, or taking communion and being baptized, tithing, singing, worshiping songs, being, you know, prayer, saying prayers, calling oneself Christian or reading the Bible. It depends on the heart, where my heart is. I can do all these things, but if my heart is not there, then I am far away. I am dead, spiritually dead. Yeah. What is needed is for us to walk in the light, loving our brothers and sisters, pursuing holiness, having the Holy Spirit, you know, bringing about the good, you know, producing the fruits of the Spirit, living and loving God with all your heart, because God cannot be fooled. He knows the truth. And again, we see the advice that Jesus gives to this church. Because there was a bit of life left in this church. There were a few believers. But they seemed to be decreasing in numbers. And perhaps also in spiritual zeal. Before long, the church would die. Would die out unless there was a revival. And many congregations and some entire denominations are like this. Death of the church or denomination is often slow. It generally starts with compromise, poor teaching, and a lack of hunger for the word of God are also major factors. Leaders start going through the motions and the congregation follows. Few new people join in. The congregation ages because there is no power in the preaching or in the life of the church. The church needs revival. People start drifting away from the Lord. The gospel isn't preached for, for transformation. Christ is not centered. You know, someone once said that the church is dying because the cross of Christ is being removed from the center. So if we can put back the cross of Jesus, then we can always remember that we are here for you, God. We are saving Jesus, not ourselves. But we, we, we have come so self-centered that we have forgotten our mandate and what, what, our, what our calling is. So all these things <laughs> are, are, are affecting the, the church, the, 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 life, the, the church to, be, to come alive or the revival of the church. As we see that we hear people saying that the church is dying a slow death. It's true. Sometimes people will say, the church, where is the church when all these things are happening? The church is so quiet. But we see Christians moving around Sunday after Sunday. We see them going around preaching the way the, the, the Easter, the Good Fridays are packed, the churches are packed, but what happens when we really need to hear them? And so it is only revival, but revival can only happen when we, we invite Christ to journey with us because without reproduction, there is nothing new to bring. What, what is left it's a bunch of empty facilities, empty buildings. Uh, and finally, these are sold off to, to other churches or whoever who wants to buy. I, I've seen in the area in, in uh, Pretoria, north side of Bonnerboom, there were churches there, but now and you can see that this is now a residential place, but 
it, and you can see that it, it was a church before. So it died and somebody bought it and turned it into a residential home. So this is what's happening to us. And Jesus is saying, wake up, strengthen what remains. Believers need to wake up. Those that are left, the remnant that is left needs to wake up and strengthen what they have and strengthen themselves by coming back to the weight. Here we hear again repentance. And as we are in this Lenten season, repentance is preached throughout. Repentance, repentance. And Jesus is urging us to repent, to come back to him, to come back to the weight. Here's the thing. We need to soak in the true gospel. Then those who are left need to preach the gospel boldly with the power of the Holy Spirit. And through them, revival of the church can still happen. But if they believers do not wake up and maybe zealously seek and proclaim the truth, the entire thing will die with them. Because sometimes we, we want to be so relevant that we leave the truth of God hanging there because the majority says this. I can just imagine this few that was left in service, what they went through. They must have gone through some kind of persecutions from their fellow Christians saying that they think they are better than them. So sometimes the pressure gets to us that we, we started going with the trends and forgetting that we, we were called and called for one reason only, but to bring people to Christ, to Christ and revive his church, which is his body. And when you read again, you see that, was there anything good in this church? I think there was something good because Jesus says you still have a few. Not everyone in the church was dead. Some were living holy lives. Jesus was pleased with them and promised, and he promises that they will walk with him in white. He commends them as being worthy. And from this, we can learn about God's character. He is fair. He doesn't judge the righteous along with the wicked. He does not condemn the entire group if the entire group is not guilty. God judges people individually. We see this in Abraham's interaction with God about the judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah. God spared the only righteous in the city, Lord and his family. In the same way, we can or we will not be judged for others' sins and others will not be judged by our sins. And so we get to understand uh, uh, if there was a specifically, uh, there, there was specifically, uh, what specifically do the believers in Sardis need to conquer for them to be able to be worthy, to be found worthy by the Lord? The one who conquers, this phrase appears in each of the letters. The saints in Sardis lived among a dead and lifeless Christian culture. They needed to conquer the temptation of falling into empathy or into losing their zeal, if one may put it that way, and just following traditions rather than following Christ. So the one who conquests will be clothed, thus in white garments. And this means that God is the one who provides the garments. If you read Matthew chapter 22, verse 1 to 14, he is the only one who can make us suitable for entering into his kingdom. We cannot make ourselves acceptable through any amount of self-effort, but we need him every step 
of the way. Uh, uh, lastly, as, as I conclude, this part of the problem of the church of Sardis, they, they look good, they had some works, they followed some traditions, but they did not come to the source to get their white robes. In the end, they tried to clothe themselves with what they had, their riches, their earthly materials, and God was not impressed, and God would not accept that. And so the lesson that we get from this is that we, we must not be fooled. You know, I've seen people leaving churches, moving to one church from another, saying that church has got more life than the other one is dying. We, we cannot be uh, uh, fooled by, by the looks unless we, we see deeper and ask the Holy Spirit to, to help us to discern whether this church is spiritually alive or is dead. Because the most important thing with the church, it's not the numbers, it's not how many people are there, it's not the, 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 the sermons that are preached, but the spiritual life. If the spiritual life is there, then that is the church that Christ wanted. And that is the church that Christ prayed for. Thank you, Fundis. Hey, yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Sredi. Thank you so much. You know, uh, listening to you, I, I really uh, feel that you are so prophetic. You, you, you have made a good application uh, of, of, of what we have read. Uh, applying uh, the scripture to what is going on today in our churches. Uh, thank you so much. This is powerful. This is uh, uh, thought provoking. Uh, this is um, um, like we we hear God speaking to us in this platform. Uh, I, 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 I feel that you are not talking to uh, uh, people in Sardis, but we are talking to us. Thank you so much for such a powerful presentation. Friends, we, we are here, we have listened to Reverend Pirre, uh, this time is for us to ask questions, to engage and to make comments or whatever we, we feel uh, uh, God has laid in our hearts. You, you can raise your hand if you don't know how, it doesn't matter. You can just unmute and make your uh, your your comment. A dog, Mfundisnabazalo. Mfundisnabazalo. Ane ngia kabona ngogos thobo kuhulu. I want to admit to but I was hesitant to comment because I was on and off. I missed okay. most of the presentation, although I did get, I think, the important message, especially about us relying on the Spirit of God. And that is the reason I just want to ask how we can deal with the challenge. Yoguti sometimes we are not reflecting on ourselves enough, but we are quick to look at others. I think the 
the challenge that I see with our spirituality at the moment is that we can see other people's mistakes very quickly, but we don't see ourselves and and our congregations, our churches, our denominations. If if anybody says anything wrong about my church, about me, I'm quick to defend myself. But at the same time, I'm very quick to see how others are wrong. I'm wondering if Umfundisi has a way to help us address what I think is some spiritual exclusivism or some personal exclusivism. You want everybody else to be scrutinized, but not me. Um, I think we need God's help in, in looking at ourselves. I'm reminded of the gentleman who went to pray and the parable that Jesus speaks about, you know, the the two gentlemen going into the prayer, the other one says, Lord, I'm so happy that I, I tithe, I don't do like my friend here, I don't do blah, blah, blah. Started just talking about the next person, not looking at himself. But when it was his turn, the other brother would not even look up he would not even look at him. He looked down and just said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And when Jesus speaks about this parable, he asks them and he says, who do you think went home, you know, justified? And I think the one that sought for his salvation without having to measure just how good compared to others they are, was was the one who went more, you know, feeling they were in the presence of the Lord. And I'm praying and I'm wondering if Umfundis has a way to help us address that. Um, I'm not sure if that is making any sense uh, regarding how the Spirit of God can help us to be revived, as Umfundis was saying. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Umfundis. Uh, it does. It does make sense. I hear uh, what you are saying very well, very clearly. So uh, I, 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 I will, I will hand over to Mfundi uh, Supire. But I, I, I just want to say, um, for, for, okay, let let's give Mfundi um, Supire to to respond. Mfundi. Thank, thank you, Fundisi. Um, I think, you know, uh, it's hard for us as Christians to receive criticism, and whether it's constructive or destructive. And we, we find it hard to do introspection because I believe if we can be honest with ourselves, and be honest with our position with God and our proximity with, are we that close to God or what? But sometimes when a person is saying that I'm spiritually dead or seeing something wrong with me and pointing it out to me, it's because I know for sure and, and then I'll quickly defend myself instead of using that opportunity to say, God, revive me, I'm dying. And surely if somebody has seen something in me, something is wrong, there is something that is wrong with me that I need to come before the Lord, you know, look into the mirror. This season of Lent is, is saying to us, let us do introspection. Let us see our position, our posture, our proximity with God, where are we? with God and only then when we become aware and honestly aware and admit our weaknesses is then we can move and allow God to revive us then the church of God will be revived as the church is in need of spiritual revival thank you Mfundis. Thank, thank you so much Mfundis. thank you 
Uh, I, I'm not sure what others would say, but I just want to say uh, the, the question from Mfun uh, Sumpofu borders around the issue of uh, judging others. I might be wrong, but uh, uh, people today are are not happy when uh, the gospel is preached. And people would uh, sometimes use the statement of Jesus where he said, thou shall not judge other people because the judgment judged accordingly. By using that, uh, for 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 defense against whatever the wrong things that they are doing, that they there is no one who has a right to judge any other person, and um, but from the same scripture. Uh, we hear Jesus say, if you are going to judge another person, uh, start with you, remove the log in your eye. For me, it says, uh, before you point out any wrong from another person, you must make sure that you, you are in, in inverted commas, uh, you are holy. There is nothing uh, that will be pointed to you. Uh, I know that that is very difficult because one would say, who is the saints? Who, who does not sin? But uh, the question would be, if the judgment is not for us, uh, who is it for? Is it not the church that should discipline people? When we discipline people, should they say, not you, because uh, the Bible says, thou shalt not judge, and, and all that. I'm, I'm just uh, thinking um, around those, those points, but for me, is, 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 you are quite right that we are quick to judge other people. But are we dealing with ourselves? Uh, and, and I understand you not to say we shouldn't uh, point wrongs that other people are doing. Otherwise, if, if that is what you mean, I would have a problem with that. Uh, what other people are saying? Yes, to me. Yes, um, thank you, Murut. Yeah, I, I think when it comes to the issue of, of, of pointing the wrongs um, in, in the church, I think uh, most of us who are, who are the leaders, we, we mostly don't receive that well. And I think that is one of the biggest issues that um, causes the church to degenerate even further. Because if, if, if Muruti Tati is is in the wrong and no one approaches him to show him the wrongs that he's doing. He, you know, he continues and that taints the integrity of the church even, 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 even further. So I think if you know that you are some of the people who are in leadership in the church, you need to be able to receive um, criticism if it's positive or be able to discern, to say, um, when somebody is approaching me with a point of correction, I should be humble enough to see that as a, a way of building up my character and to, so that the, the church also learns. And it's not something that is meant to maybe, a, you know, develop my, myself as a, as a leader in the church. So most of us, we, we are unable to receive that. And I think those are one of the biggest issues that you will find in, in the churches. And, and some people learn from those and think that 
because Muruti is doing this and that, it means this is how it's supposed to be done. Irrespective of whether it aligns with the weight or not, uh, it's easy to see uh, from a, a, another Christian. We, we learn from seeing than from reading. Um, you, you will just assume that because uh, Muruti Tati is doing this, it means this is how it, it, it's supposed to be. My, my other point was on the issue of the selected few that Jesus spoke about um, that were like, he's, he's saying that there is a, a few of those that have not tainted their garments and they're still white. And I will give them um, the, the reward at the end. Uh, I think if we were to be honest, um, in most of our Christian churches, there's always those few. I, I'm not, uh, Corey, I want to say, you will find that there are those Christians that are, are very much uh, solid. Uh, they may not be very active in the church, but um, I think in every Christian church, you, you, you definitely find those that um, are more sound in, in, in terms of their conduct and their spiritual work with, with Christ. I don't think it's possible for the whole church just to be tainted uh, from from uh, the first person to the last person. It's it's very rare um, if if it occurs. So I think Jesus always has a way of um, selecting his people, even in the in one of the worst churches that you can think of, um, churches that you will find that um, they will uh, practice idolatry and and some of the most visible sins. But I think I will speak from my own experience. You will find that during your interaction, you could actually even wonder why is this person in this church? Because it looks like um, their alignment to the doctrine that they understand is not exactly what this church preaches. Uh, and, and then it's very surprising to say, you know, why, why are they in, in here? Why? Um, is Muruti Tati in Presbyterian um, while you know the doctrine of Presbyterians and the majority of the conduct of Presbyterians. So it's like there's an invisible church that Jesus has chosen, which we are unable to see by the naked eye. And, and, and those will be a few of the selected people in many of the denominations. So it, it, you, you find that when Jesus comes back, those three that are from each and every denomination that is there uh, will be the, actually the ones that are saved. But the majority of us uh, will find that we are never part of the church that Jesus has called. We were just an additional number because uh, you know we, we do not fit the description of how Jesus wanted us to be. Thank you. Yes, hey. Yes, no, that is powerful, Dom. Very powerful. You know, uh, the other day I was uh, watching a, a, a video clip of uh, of uh, the Roman Catholic Church and listening to their music and their preaching. I was saying to myself, God is uh, making things. Uh, new things is creating something that has never been there before, because uh, in in the Roman Catholic you would uh, think that there are no saved people. Uh, they worship Maria and and all other things, but to my surprise, the 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 the, the music that they were doing. Uh, uh, doing all these uh, things that we normally do and the preaching that came through from the minister, I was saying, is, is this the Roman Catholic Church? So I'm, I want to agree with you that in each and every church, God is planting his own people who are going to preach the true gospel and uh, you would as you say, wonder why these people uh, are in this denomination and God has put them there. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, Mfundis, Supir. Um, Mfundis, yes. 
I'll agree with and uh, that to me on that, that there are few, there, there's always few. The challenge is that we, who, who should be following, who, who, whom our garments are soiled, whom we should be following, we're not following them. Instead, we are suppressing them and, you know, calling them names. And therefore, I think Jesus, when he was mentioning this few, he was trying to say to those with. We can't hear you now. With oh, can you hear me now? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Yes, we, we can hear you now. Yes. You can hear me now. Yeah, okay. I'm, not, I'm not sure whether the problem is on my side. I was yeah. that, no, I think it's on my side. It's on my side with the network. The connection. But uh, what I was saying was that if we that can follow those that are few that Jesus is Maybe if we move around. Yeah. Yes, I'm not sure whether that she is moving around. He, uh, she is she's cutting. In this church. Instead I'm Oh, I'm sure he's the network. I'm, I'm copy like a man. Uh, she is, she is, she is, she she is disconnected and anyway uh when she reconnects maybe she will she will be able to say what she was uh she wanted to say otherwise friends um uh, uh i can see people are, are are being disconnected i'm not sure whether it's low shading or what because it's eight o'clock maybe some are uh, cut because of load shedding. And, and anyway, friends, I think that the point, is, or maybe we, sh we should uh, ask Umfun Sumpofu uh, if uh, she has been answered. If he has been answered. Mundi, is open to the word? Yeah, Mundi, is open to the word. Yeah, Mundi, is open to the word. What are you talking about? Some there can be a deeper conversation around this. I think the approach Yabandaba Penduli Leo has been yeah. from the perspective of Abandabangas Nigelang Evangelini, where Oxatinega Konugutabandu, Abamam Geluche, Suba Pile Mogues, Koraben Kuluma Mina Ega Kulu Nati, SSS Nigelengo Sin. Toluguti strong cases is Senko Sini. Go to Ama Division, Seloke Jalo, Epagatu, Thumbing and Zela, Esirilatang a corner. Abanem Thumbe Bafila sang at Babu Gelo Pansy because of his spirituality. Abum Thumbing of Basa Kula or Banezinto Abas and Abatin Gutiba Fundi Suenabu Kulenko Sin, Maven Abigas and Luma Veni. Bese guba konuksha isana si hande singe zwani sometimes to a point of uma wizi ndweze nzega guba fundi mta umbe mwwe vange luguti ezi nizi ndo ziti ngut si zifundi sani jong presenza ma paipu start. Bese zivela sibe divided, zivela si sibugela nepazi or even avoid each other because asufu melane ntwene stile. Ngoba singa kolo. Yeah, lay or go church, but sing a caller, it's something else. But Nani Shonji, just us, sometimes there are these challenges. So, would you, we, we don't find it easy to keep healthy relationships 
e revive ali bese ya shayega inkonzo ziya ham thola abanye nama Bible study wena la swenda kona nta abanga funuk sonde la gu Bible study tile ngoba guzobe gukulu mubani o yenzu mubani nga panzuwe banta ligaba kwa rasa nga baza luane I'm not sure who will see challenge about say we buy one abanye but in your one amina njuguti kuna banda banga gese gule platform buso buso guti gugwenta galani nata si gubo nata bezi giti or it's just without the for reasons as a technical or equal is in domelis is long is a lap yes thank you so much thank you so much mfundis yes i i think you 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 are right uh there is so much uh it discrimination amongst us as Christians uh, to look down on other Christians uh, or and on other people as if they are not in the in the in, in good standing uh, uh, in 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 the things of God. So there, there, there is that. Maybe we, we need to see how we can talk about it in the in the in in in, in one of the Bible studies and look at, at how we, we should approach it and maybe we can help each other to address that and uh, uh, at the end we 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 may we may find ourselves sitting uh, 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 Thank you so much. Uh, is there anyone else to say something? Yes, thank you, Bob. I think uh, it's important what you just said. Now that is, uh, we we may need a deeper session in terms of. I feel like it will be mostly about. Um, conflict resolution mostly uh, amongst the church or amongst ourselves as Christians. It, it encompasses too many different uh, perspectives. If mm. it's if it's within sin or uh, if it's within scriptural indifferences and in some of the conduct between ourselves. I think the Bible teaches a lot on that. I think we can look it uh, in that way. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Cecilia, you have to be noted. It has been noted. This out. Um, the topic that has come, uh, Umfundis has brought up. It's not. It's not really new. Um, where you find that people have been so long in the faith that they start to take it for granted. But in the Indobana, they 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 are owners mm. of, the, of, 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 of the word or of the church. Um, it, 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 it needs uh, then for people mm. um, go back to the basics. Why are we in the church? Um, and it will, it will need uh, a, a day on its own. As a topic, that's that, that, that's how I feel. So, um, you know, it it is quite a a challenge. It is yeah. quite a challenge, and it's happening. But um, um, it, it it I I I really think it would need a day on its own just to look into it and go some from this. Thank you so much, friends. Uh, if you have time, if you have time. Um uh, Fundi Sumarane is dealing with is doing a series on what is the church uh, on Fridays. Uh, I think they started last week. Maybe some of the questions that we have or concerns that we have uh, may be answered if we uh, take time to listen. They do it on Fridays at half past four. No. Yes, half past four to half past five. So we 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 are going to send the poster and the and the link. 
So if you have time, you can just listen to what he has to say. Thank you so much, friends, uh, for being here. Uh, I see the challenge of the connectivity, but you you are still here. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, is back. Maybe we should, uh, before we close, we give her the to do uh, closing remarks uh, so that we pray, then we, we, we close. And Fundu Pire, you can, you were cut, uh, when you were making your point, we could not uh, get you well. So if you, 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 you can uh, maybe say some few things that you wanted to say and do your concluding remarks. Thank you. You are still cutting. You are still cutting from this. We thank God that uh, this thing uh, is coming uh, now. Otherwise, uh, he, 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 she was able to to make the presentation up to the end. Otherwise, we thank God for that. Uh, friends, we are coming to the end. Um, Oh, sorry, Funis. Bang it like a criteria not to get any load shot in most areas more aid. Bang five minutes. Maybe she can type her final words. When someone would took type her, I will have it because me now I'm still connected, but I'm on another uh, router. But my type her when I call and just to give those final words up there. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, she will not even. Uh, hear that because in Kupi. Uh, oh, yeah, that is the third one. Sorry yes. about that. Yes. No, friends, thank you so much. We appreciate uh, the time we had together. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for being here. Uh, next week, uh, we, we, we will have Umfundisi Unemawukwe to deal with uh, the, the next uh, teaching. Thank you so much. May God bless you. All right, let us pray. We give you honor, Lord. We give you all the glory. We magnify your holy name. There is None like you, Lord. You are the most high God. Siabonga mtala wensugu. Mano nkulungu lungu uwe. Siabonga tuwala linsinji soyetu. Sibule lango usingu kusebenzi isa. Mfundisi upiri chukwetu. Siabule la tuwala linsinji soyetu. Mo ingwele. Sele kulumile. Baboto ingwele. Revive us, Lord. Revive us, mo ingwele. Revive your church. Revive everyone who belongs to Christianity. Chukwetu. Uze ngose ya msikuwa zupumela nga pande. Sio evangelize at kotanegayo. Simi suche so sindisayo. Moyo inwele. We lay down our lives to kotanegayo. Sia vumangosi. Asenza nga kakuhle. Babo tu inwele. Ika mala kwa silpatanga kabu inwele. Pina gengo seka meni liga yusu. Sia nazarete. Mo inwele. Buisele chiko wetu. La mfutu malu ya kala. Nasa situ shesu siya mamkela. Njene kosmo msindisi. Even in this land season, Tlotanigayo, Snegeza Manya Manda Macha, Chkowetu, Usongezelele, Ukolo, Babotu Inwele, Moingwele, Pinde Chkowetu, Snegeza, the spirit of discernment. Ubi Bandalia, Fa, Nipele, Chkowetu, Likona, without the spirit of discernment. Sigwazu Kholimi Moya, Kulugulo Inwele, Siabonga Gumdana Wakum Sibinzi Sleo, Chkowetu, Sibonga Bonga Moingwele, Bandanabaku, Ibangena. Ba participate and Gulugulo Namanta, okay. Cas is our lal and Gulugulo Namanta. Then I get to go to Loan and Aloa and Gossi. Catch that one and that one and that one, Lord. Eka Menil got your success in Azarete. I declare and decree to go to your divine protection, Babona Manta, okay. Babona Manta, I stand it to go to 
against all the principalities of darkness in heavenly places, Lord. We are your children. You have chosen us to go away to in this era. That's spirit of boldness to be brave to go Amen. Amen.